You joined the Army and chose aviation maintenance as your career. Did you know you also chose aviation maintenance safety? You are charged with the responsibility of avoiding injury to yourself and those around you. It is not just luck or something that happens. It is your job. This program will show how shop and flight line safety is a matter of two things, attitude and safety practices. The correct attitude to have for safety is to act as if your life depended on it. Often it does. Dangerous attitudes to develop include overconfidence, reluctance to ask for help, carelessness, and absent-mindedness. This knowledgeable mechanic has earned the reputation of being the best mechanic in the outfit. He feels he can handle any job, which is why he's a little overconfident. Him use a torque wrench? No need. Pull it up tight and then a half a turn is fine. After all, he's been at this a while. His overconfidence could be dead wrong. This young soldier suffers not from overconfidence, but from a fear of looking foolish and inexperienced. He didn't ask for help when he should. So he is foolish after all, and dangerous. Carelessness is this soldier's problem. He just doesn't think. He needs to learn to be careful of his actions and think seriously about their consequences. Absent-mindedness is one attitude you cannot have around aircraft. To prevent accidents, you must be conscious of your surroundings. To stay alive, you must stay alert. Avoid problem attitudes and treat safety as if your life depended on it and half the battle is won. Besides attitude, there are many safety practices in the shop and on the flight line that are important. For instance, so that you don't lose your hearing, you must wear hearing protection when running up aircraft. Or when using machinery. Wear goggles during any machinery operation or when using striking and cutting tools since flying particles can put out an eye. Tighten sleeves around wrists and allow no loose or ragged edges that might catch. Use pliers to hold metal when grinding since it will get hot. Make it a habit to remove jewelry and watches when working with machinery and on aircraft. People who haven't have lost or damaged fingers and hands. Malfunctioning tools must be repaired or removed from service immediately. Electrical tools should be kept to an absolute minimum on aircraft since aircraft fuel is highly flammable. Be sure you ground all aircraft in the hangar. 
Static electricity around aircraft fuel could result in sudden fire or explosion. Keep a neat, well-arranged workplace. Equipment should be stored in a centralized area. Keep all aisles clear and non-slippery. No tools should be lying around on the floor. When moving maintenance stands, use two persons to push and guide. Move stands slowly and cautiously to avoid bumping and damaging an aircraft. Lock maintenance stands in place. Use drip pans to avoid oil slicks. If some oil has been spilled, use absorbent compound to remove it immediately. When moving power equipment, ensure the path is clear of personnel and obstructions. Don't work under suspended objects. Smoking is off limits in the shop area. Know where the fire extinguishers are located and whether they are meant for ordinary combustibles combustible liquids, electrical equipment, or combustible metals. Never add water to a chemical because the chemical could splatter. Rather, add the chemical to water. Wear appropriate safety clothing when handling chemicals, including detergents. Always use the right tool for the job. Using pliers where a wrench is needed can tear up hardware and surrounding components, resulting in stress cracks and component failure. The wrong wrench can tear up a nut. The wrong screwdriver can slip. Do not use cadmium tools. They can flake and go into the aircraft's oil system. Always inventory the number of tools you take out of the toolbox. When you are finished with the tools, count the number you put back to ensure you haven't left one in the aircraft. Leaving one behind can be fatal. The good mechanic always keeps the appropriate technical manual by his side and uses it so he can carry out procedures 100% correctly. Never try to work by memorization. Use the technical manual to choose the torque wrench to use as well. And the degree of torque. 
Under-torquing invites early fatigue failure or the possibility of a fastener working loose. Over-torquing results in stressing of the bolt, a loss of strength, and possible breakage. All of which can be fatal. Make sure aircraft are cleaned according to schedule. This will prevent corrosion, which can cause parts to fail. A very ugly word in aviation is FOD, foreign object damage, caused when seemingly harmless items, such as pebbles, bits of wire, and even rags, cups, and nuts and bolts get into aircraft systems. When these items are carelessly left in the aircraft, they are more than messy. They can mean erosion of the engine, clogging of the inlet guide vanes, ripping and tearing of the compressor blade, and even tearing of the blades completely off the compressor. For this reason, when you work on aircraft, be sure to take off your pin-on rank. Don't wear boots with pleated soles, which can collect pebbles. And never take or leave any loose items on the aircraft to cause FOD and tragedy. When towing aircraft into or out of a hangar, ensure there is plenty of clearance, particularly of the blades. When towing, personnel in the rear must be behind the wheels, not in front. Ensure ground handling wheels and tow bar are properly secured, and on two-bladed helicopters, ensure one main rotor blade is tied down. Observe the towing speed limit and other safety requirements of the airfield. Only handle ground support equipment if you are trained and authorized to do so. Never play around or on the aircraft, or randomly operate switches. When an aircraft is being run up, always approach it in full view of the pilot, so he won't unknowingly start taking off or taxiing towards you. Stay clear of the hot exhaust of turbine engines. And be especially sure you are clear of the blades. One of the most dangerous but necessary operations is the fueling or defueling of an aircraft. If you value your life, use extreme caution when doing or assisting in either. Follow all regulations pertaining to fueling and defueling operations. including ensuring the fuel port of the aircraft is at least 20 feet from the fueling vehicle, 50 feet from any building or hangar, and 300 feet from radar operations. Consider wind direction so fumes will not be blown toward any igniting source. Connect a static ground cable from the aircraft to the ground. Ensure the fueling vehicle is chopped. Connect servicing unit to the ground and aircraft. Wear protective gloves and helmet visor or goggles and be sure your clothes are completely buttoned. If you get any fuel on your clothes from fueling or other operations, it must be washed out immediately. Keep a fully charged 50-pound fire extinguisher ready.
ground the nozzle to the aircraft prior to opening the filler port. Once you have safely completed a fueling operation or any job in the shop and on the flight line, you can feel proud of a job well done, a responsibility well met. If you don't do your job, equipment can be irreparably damaged. Lives can be tragically lost. So don't become overconfident, reluctant to ask for help, careless or absent-minded, and practice all safety guidelines in Army regulations and your work environment, and the well-being of you and those around you will be assured. The Army goal for safety will have been met.